with this we embark on the last part of our course part D so let's uh, take a look back and uh, see uh, the the road we took to arrive at this point uh, in part A of this course uh, we started with the motivation behind uh, why uh, this course should be useful uh, looked at uh, the basics of probability theory uh, reviewed the basics of random variables and distributions discussed quite a few uh, discrete and continuous random variables that appear commonly in structural reliability uh, we looked at joint distributions and ended part B with uh, Monte Carlo simulations particularly how to generate discrete continuous and dependent random variables uh, in part B uh, we gave an overview about uh, the evolution of the subject of reliability and structured reliability uh, in particular uh, defined some basic terms uh, spent a good amount of time on discussing how to formulate reliability problems uh, and then uh, how a system can be represented in terms of its constituent elements and uh, described the types of redundancy that uh, we see uh, in various systems uh, then we uh, looked at we took up the phenomenological approach uh, to reliability and uh, time to failure in particular so uh, that TTF uh, was the only random variable describing uh, the uncertainty in the processes so that's why we call it phenomenological and uh, we estimated various statistics of the random time to failure including the mean time to failure the hazard function the reliability function and so on uh, we also discussed how to estimate these statistics from a test program we ended uh, part b with uh, this phenomenological approach for systems reliability so the system failure and system reliability was were defined in terms of the uh, time to failure and reliability functions uh, of its constituent elements uh, in part C we uh, started with the physics based or capacity demand uh, approach to reliability uh, as opposed to the phenomenological approach so we looked at uh, first the time invariant problems and in that context we discussed the first order reliability method the second order reliability method Monte Carlo simulations and important sampling simulations for estimating uh, component reliability uh, and then um, we introduced time the, the time aspect first in a non-random way so where uh, the capacity and demand or in general the basic variables uh, change with time but in a non-random way and then we brought in randomness first in the form of pulse loads with random magnitudes then we considered the pulses to appear uh, as a Poisson process uh, with random magnitudes and then um, we looked at the first passage problem uh, in which uh, both uh, the load process and the strength process were random but stationary in nature uh, we then looked at we ended that time dependent reliability formulation based on the underlying physics with reliability based maintenance uh, of a component how to take decisions in which we looked both at the effect of perfect repair and imperfect repair and how uh, those affect the hazard function and the reliability function uh, in the last part of part C we looked at a system reliability formulation in terms of the underlying physics the underlying mechanics uh, of uh, the system uh, and uh, we described uh, first the series configuration uh, which was relevant for non redundant systems as well as multiple failure modes of one 
component or one structural member, um, dual performance, dual or multiple performance levels that can be used in design, and dual or multiple load combinations uh, for various design situations. Uh, we then moved on to parallel and other active redundant configurations. Uh, we uh, introduced how to bring in sequence effects and how sequence effects are important, uh, both for two idealized material behavior situations, uh, brittle behavior on one end and ductile behavior uh, on the other. We are now, uh, as I said, in part D, the last part of our course where we have uh, six lectures uh, planned. Uh, it's called, we have named it Part D Reliability Based Design and we would like to discuss uh, the idea of probability based design and design codes, uh, partial factors of safety or load and resistance factors to be used in design, uh, walk through one or two examples. Uh, and in the last week, uh, the last few lectures, uh, we would like to address the question uh, of uh, how safe is safe enough, so uh, how uh, to set target reliabilities uh, and what they should be, uh, and then uh, go out a little more in to the towards the interface of uh, engineering reliability and society, uh, because this question of how safe is safe enough is in that domain. 